Hi there, everybody, and welcome again to Z Code Sports System. Here we developed automated systems to help you win big every time. It doesn't matter what you're betting on, we've got you covered. Before I get into some games for July 23rd, I want to invite you to join so you'll have access to this VIP club section, which has all the tools to help you make your picks. So, we're going to take a look here. There's a full slate of games for July 23rd. We want to take a look at five of them as we are past the All Star break and the trade deadline is approaching. So, uh, the games are starting to become more important. So, we're going to go down through these. Again, there's a full list of games. We're going to go through five of them. First one we're going to go through is Arizona and Cincinnati. You see the Diamondbacks come in ice cold down, coming off from a loss in two and four over their last six. While Cincinnati is coming off of two wins, they are dead up, and they are 2-4 and four over their last six. If you look at the uh, power ranks indicator, you can see that Arizona on an upward trend from plus 16 to plus 25, while Cincinnati took a nosedive from, nine, uh, from 24 down to 6 over the course of a couple weeks, and now they're back up to plus 10. If you take a look at the over-under, you can see that Arizona has been involved in games over in four of the last six, while Cincinnati under in five of the last six, so the teams are on opposite sides of the line at the moment. The score prediction has Arizona 9, Cincinnati 4. Confidence in the prediction, you see those just barely above the toss of a coin at 51%. If you look at the head-to-head -head matchup between the two teams, they have not yet met in the regular season this year. A consistency factor... You can see that Arizona is more stable at plus 24, excuse me, plus 14 compared to the Reds at plus 7, which means they are more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status. So in the end, though, I think this is a Diamondbacks win on the road and going to go for a higher scoring game. So Arizona and over the line. Okay, the second one we want to look at is Baltimore and Tampa Bay in the AL East here. You can see that Baltimore comes in average up. And you can see under here that Tampa Bay is ice cold down. And the big thing you can look at is the streak here. The streak here for Baltimore is 4-2 and two over their last six, while Tampa has lost their last four, and they are 2-4 and four over their last six. Uh, the pitching matchup, Tyler Wells against Taj Bradley. You can see Wells has a good ERA of 3.54, and is very good bet at plus $159. While Bradley has struggled, his ERA is 5.29, and his home ERA is even worse at almost six, and is a very poor bet as you can see here, at minus 365. If you take a look at the over-under, you can see the teams have been involved in games on uh, opposite sides of the line. Uh, Baltimore mostly over, and Arizona, excuse me, Tampa Bay more under. The score prediction has Baltimore by an 8-3 score. You see here the confidence in the prediction at 63.2%. Take a look at the power ranks indicator. Both teams are near the top of the league, although Baltimore on a slight downward trend at plus 26, and you can see Tampa Bay at plus 24. In the head-to-head -head matchup this year, the teams have already met several times. You can see that they met three times in May, with Baltimore winning two of the three, and teams splitting on the two games uh, in Tampa Bay on Jan uh, June 20th and June 21st. If you look at the stability factor, how consistent the two teams are, look at this. Tampa Bay among the most stable teams in the league at plus 32, while Baltimore is also pretty consistent, but not nearly as much at plus 13. So in the end, though, I like this to be an Baltimore win, but I'm going to pass on the over-under. Okay, so then the third one we want to look at here, as we go down through all these, is Atlanta and Milwaukee. Even though Atlanta is on the top of the league, um, they're struggling lately, just two and four of their last six. You can see their ice cold up. You can see Milwaukee is burning hot, uh, winners of their last two and five out of their last six. The pitching matchup has Bryce Elder versus Julio Tehran. Um, Elder is a good bet at plus $38. Tehran, not as much at minus 175, even though he has a good uh, home ERA of 3.10. But the away ERA of Elder is better at 2.83 than his ERA for the season at 3.31. If you take a look at the trends as far as the over-under goes, I would steer away from this because uh, Milwaukee's been involved in games under the line in their last six, and you can see on the opposite side of the spectrum, five over for Atlanta. The score predictor has a 7-6 to six, uh, win for Milwaukee, which would, which would be over most likely, but the confidence in prediction is very low at 20, uh, 28% right now. 
On the power ranks indicated in CLN, it was at the top for quite some time. They have dipped now to plus 20 after their recent skid, and Milwaukee is up to plus 27. Okay, the stability factor, if you look at this, you can see that Atlanta is one of the most stable teams in the league at plus 27. Uh, Milwaukee, not as much, only at plus 2. You can see they've been hovering around that same the same margin since the beginning of the season. You can see plus, two, or plus 3 back on April 10th, and now they're at plus 2. Uh, months later. So in the end, I like Milwaukee at home, and I'm going to go under the line of this one. Um, the next one we want to look at is the Dodgers and the Rangers. You see right here, the Rangers come in burning hot winners of their last six, while well, the Dodgers are average about four and two of their last six. You can see the pitching matchups are Emmett Sheehan and Martin Perez, both are good bets. Uh, Perez more so at plus $461. And his home ERA is significantly better than his ERA for the season, 3.48. And the road ERA for uh, Sheehan is very poor at 6.30. If we take a look at the power ranks indicator, you can see Texas up here at the top of the league at the moment at plus 29. The Dodgers have been on an upward trend also recently from 23 up to 27 over the last couple of days. Okay, so let's take a look at the head-to-head -head matchup. The teams have not yet met this season. If you look at the stability factor, Texas is more consistent with regard to their favorite underdog status, but they have dipped somewhat in that category. You see that they were up as high as plus 16 or plus 17 even uh, a little over a month ago, and they're now at plus 14. And the Dodgers have been stable at plus 9 over the last few days. So I like the Rangers in this one at home, and I think this is going to be a higher scoring one. So let's take the Rangers and over. Okay, there's one more we want to look at here. The last one I want to go over with everyone is coming up here, Toronto and Seattle. In this one here, Toronto comes in average, 4-2 and two over the last six, while Seattle is just the opposite, 2-4 and four over their last six, and ice cold down. You can tell at the... Um, Looking at the um, over under streak on opposite sides of the line, pretty much like under the last two for Toronto, while Seattle has been in long games over in their last three. The score prediction has a pretty solid, kind of a blowout win, 8 1 for Toronto, but the confidence in the prediction is still relatively low at 49%. If we look at the power ranks indicator chart, you can see the downward trend for Seattle. They were at 18, and they dipped down to plus 9. While Toronto has been stable over the last couple of days, they're at plus 21 at the moment. If we take a look here at the volatility oscillator, the stability factor, kind of up and down for the teams. Look at the uh, chart here for Toronto. They were up as high as plus 8. They dipped down to minus 1, and now they are back to uh, plus 5. While Seattle has been mostly on an upward trend, so up and upward trend, kind of stable here for a while in June, and now they are at plus eight. So I'm going to go with a road win for the Blue Jays, and I think this is going to be a lower scoring one. So let's go with Toronto and under the line. Okay, so there you have it. Those are the, the five games we want to look at for July 23rd. Happy betting, and we will see you next time.